and welcome to our show, the Doctor's Chat Show. As we promised in our last episode that we are going to talk on the topic of kidney failure patient diet with none other than our Ayurvedic kidney expert, Dr. Puru Dhawan. So first of all, let's welcome him. Welcome to our show, sir. So, sir, today I have plenty of questions to ask you related to diet. So, sir, my first question is how far diet is important for a kidney patient? Diet is very important for a kidney failure patient. It's almost a 50% part of the treatment because whatever we eat finally converts into some kind of waste material. And in a kidney failure patient where the kidney are not functioning well, there is accumulation of the waste material. If the kidney failure patient uh, doesn't take care of the diet, what will happen? There will be imbalance. There will be the more accumulation of the waste material. Now imagine if kidney failure patient taking too much amount of protein, now, protein will convert it into creatinine during muscle metabolism. And the creatinine is not a thing which we want to be getting accumulated in our body. So, in a kidney failure patient, we have to cut down the amount of protein so that the production of the creatinine can be easily controlled. That means with the help of diet, we can control creatinine. Yeah. Similarly, in case of urea, if a kidney failure patient wants to control the urea, one has to cut down the amount of fat in the diet because urea is produced by liver during food metabolism. If the patient takes large amount of fats, what will happen? Liver has to work extra. And when the liver work extra, it produces urea extra, which will be getting accumulated in our body. With the help of diet, we can control the fat and we can control the production of urea in a kidney failure patient. That means we can control all kinds of waste material in our body with the help of diet only. Okay, so diet really plays a vital role for a kidney. When the kidney are not functioning, there is accumulation of the waste material. And if we are not taking care of diet, what will happen? There is extra production of the waste, waste material in the body, which is affecting your health. Yes. Which is giving you adverse effect, which is giving you symptoms. Right. So at least we can cut down the amount of things like protein and fat ah. in a kidney filling patient so that there is no extra production of creatinine. Extra production. Okay. Because when we have muscles, Ketone will be produced, okay. but to a certain okay. limit. At least extra production of ketone and urea can be cut down. Okay. So sir, as you really explained very well the importance of diet, would you please also explain or give a short description what kind of a diet should be taken by a kidney patient? So as I told you earlier, we can control lots of things with the help of diet. So it's better to take out your KFT report. Now number one thing is creatinine in your report. The creatinine can be controlled with the cut down of protein because creatinine is a waste material produced by muscle during muscle metabolism. In a kidney failure patient, if we cut down the amount of protein in our diet, suppose we don't take any kind of meat, chicken, fish, egg, milk, what will happen? That the production of creatinine will go low and there will be no extra accumulation of the waste material or especially of creatinine. In case of urea, second thing is urea. Urea can be controlled with the help of if we cut down the amount of fat in our diet as I told you earlier. Now there is one more very lethal thing which is much more dangerous than creatinine and that is potassium. Potassium is the thing which gives power to our muscles. Suppose a kidney failure patient with a large amount of potassium, what will happen? The patient may suffer from cardiac arrest. Okay. So to control the amount of potassium in a kidney failure patient, one has to cut down all kind of high potassium food items. Okay. Now, food item can be divided into lots of, you know, Categories. categories. Uh, first thing is to be understand that each and every food item contains potassium. Okay. It can be low, it can be moderate, it can be high. So, in a kidney failure patient, we have to cut down all kind of high potassium food items. Now, food item has to be categorized in uh, multiple uh, categories. First is vegetable. In case of vegetable, we have to cut down all kind of rooty and leafy vegetable. Any vegetable which is grown below the surface of earth, which is tuberous in nature, contains potassium in high amount, like potatoes, sweet potato, turnip, beetroot. All these vegetables are high in potassium, but there are exceptions too. And that is carrot, onion, and radish. These three vegetables, which is also grown below the surface of earth, doesn't contain potassium in high amount. That means we can take radish, carrot, and onion, or garlic in our diet. In case of uh, Leafy vegetable, we have to avoid all kind of leafy vegetable like coriander, parsley, mint because they also contain potassium in high amount. Dressed vegetable, which is grown as a fruit on a plant or a creeper, can be easily taken like snake grout, round grout, brinjals, okra, 
all these vegetables can be easily taken. In category of fruits, we have to cut down all kinds of citrus fruits like mango, oranges, quinoa, grapes. And we have to avoid all high potassium fruits like banana, kiwi, avocado, dry fruits, coconut, coconut water. In category of cereals, all cereals are allowed to a kidney failure patient. Patient can take wheat, rice and other derivative of wheat and rice also. Like we take biscuits or we take cookies made up of wheat can be easily taken by kidney failure patient. Bread, whether it is white, white bread or brown bread can be easily taken by kidney failure patient. Now there is very important thing which has to be taken care of and that is amount of fluid in our diet. Amount of water which we take has to be filtered out by our kidney. Suppose if a kidney failure patient take large amount of fluid, what will happen? This large amount of fluid will accumulate in our body, especially in our legs and causing pedal edema and high blood pressure. And if a kidney failure patient take less amount of water, what will happen? Because of less amount of water, the urine formation will drop. And as the urine formation drop, what will happen? The clearance of the creatinin through urine also drops, which increases creatinin in our blood, which causing further Damaging in damage the to the kidney. So it's very important for our kidney failure patient to understand what amount of fluid they can take. Now the problem is that, that the climatic condition of uh, is different yes. everywhere. Now suppose a patient of kidney failure is living in a cold climate. Mm. The fluid requirement is low because of the climate. And if the patient is living in a hot climate, the amount of fluid required by the body is high. So how we can decide that this amount is good for this patient or this amount is good for that patient. Yes. So very, it's very simple. Always look for sign of dehydration and that is the cracking of the lips, sore throat. If your throat is dry, that means your body is dehydrated. That means your body need fluid. Now there is a rule to take the fluid. Always take only 100 ml of fluid at a time, especially water. You have taken one cup of the water that is around 100 ml. You can repeat the same thing after 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Don't count how much time you are taking fluid in such a way. Because fluid is required to form the urine. And if the urine formation goes low, the kidney will accumulate. That means the amount of fluid varies person to person depending on the skin type and the climate they live. So simply we can say that body to body or person to person it varies. Yes. Like what is the amount of water is required. Yes. Okay. So sir, the best part of your explanation is you really makes the viewers understand very nicely in a very simple way that I personally like and I hope our viewers also like this. So guys here I would like to just ask you one thing if you have any kind of a query or your question related to kidney patients diet just do write in a comment section so that we would add it in our show and ask to our doctor. So sir as we got a question from our viewers that what amount and what type of a salt should a kidney patient have? Now that's a very nice question by the viewer. Any kidney failure patient, high blood pressure is a very common problem. If the kidney failure patient is suffering from high blood pressure and take large amount of salt, what will happen? The blood pressure will increase further. And this increase in blood pressure cause further damage to the kidney. And when the damage increases, the level of creatinine increases. And sodium is a thing which causes accumulation of fluid inside our body. Okay. So it may cause pedal edema. Okay. That means in a kidney failure patient, we have to cut down the amount of salt. So we advise all kidney failure patients to take a pinch of salt in each meal. That is very small amount of salt. Now the question arises, what quality of salt has to be taken? So we advise all kidney failure patients to take rock salt or Himalayan salt, also known as pink salt. Okay. Because this salt is formed naturally in the mountains due to the accumulation of the water and evaporation through the evaporation. This salt contains potassium in a very small amount and it helps the patient to control the blood pressure. But it is not advised to those patients who have high potassium levels. Okay. So it's very, you know, fine balance. If your potassium is low, you can take pink salt. If your potassium is high, avoid pink salt or Himalayan salt. You can take normal sea salt. Okay. So we have to, you know, keep two salt in our home. If the potassium is going high, go for sea salt. Yes. If the potassium is low, go for pink salt. Pink salt. 
Okay. This, you know, in changing of the soul helps the patient to maintain the amount of potassium and sodium in our body. Okay, okay. So, uh, sea salt is all about normal salt that we get yes. from the shops and we use. And pink salt, especially the rock salt, we know that. Ha, it helps the body to control the blood pressure. Okay. Because it contains potassium. Because potassium is a thing which replaces sodium from the body. Suppose you are taking potassium, what will happen? It will replace sodium. But potassium is much more lethal than sodium. Yes. Potassium, yes. May, you know, potassium may cause heart attack, but sodium may cause high blood pressure. So we have, you know. You have to manage. The yes, we have to manage. It's a very, you know, two plate uh, sword. You have yes, to take yes, care of to, each yeah. and every. So we have to manage according to the reports. requirement and the reports. reports yes. Okay, okay. So sir, uh, this is all about sodium. That's very nice. And one more question that we, you know, saw your video in that you were just saying that sodium bicarbonate, it is really very helpful for kidney patient to, you know, it, it's a kind of a medicine. So would you please? Sodium bicarbonate is nothing. It's baking soda, which we use in cooking during, you know, uh, daily uh, life in the uh, kitchen, especially in the bed formation. Now the question arises why we need baking soda in a kidney failure patient. In a normal healthy individual, what is happening? Kidney filter out all kind of waste material and also maintain the pH of the blood. Okay. And when the function of the kidney gets affected because of some kind of hypertension or diabetes, the creatinine level increases, urea increases, this function to control the pH also will get reduced. Now what happened? There is accumulation of acid in our body. And when this there is accumulation of acid, what happens? The blood becomes acidic. And when this acidic blood circulates in our kidney, it causes further damage to the kidney. Yes. And the level of creatinine start increasing very, very high pace. Nice. And this condition is known as metabolic acidosis. Okay. Now we can't, you know, uh, remove acid from the body, but we can neutralize inside our body. And for that purpose, we use baking soda because it's very safe. Even if the patient takes in high amount, nothing is going to happen. It only helps the patient to control this acid in our body. Okay. And the condition which is known as metabolic acidosis. So it is advised all kidney failure patients to go for bicarbonate tests, so serum bicarbonate tests, so that we can, you know, see what amount of acid is accumulated in your body. Okay. So this is all about the theory of uh, baking soda. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, sir, actually in our last episode, many of our viewers asked many questions, especially because as we promised, we are going to talk related to diet. So, they asked many questions related to diet that can we really have cauliflower, peas, brinjal or something. So, I have complete list that I'm going to ask you and I really request you to please just answer it in yes and no. Okay. So, that they must get all the answers. Rapid fire round. Huh? Yeah, rapid fire round. Okay. So, let's start. Okay. So sir, brown bread. Yes. Tea. No. Green tea. Yes. Coffee. Absolutely no. Okay. Rice. Yes. Any form. Any form. Okay. And fried rice. Small amount. Yes. Okay. Fast food. Absolute no. Okay. Brinjal. Yes. Orange. No. Berries. Yes. Okay. Beetroot. No. Carrot. Yes. Cabbage. Yes. Potato. No. Fried rice. Again, you asked the for fried uh, rice. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I repeated my question. Okay. Uh, milk. Uh, one cup. Okay. Black coffee. Uh, no. Okay. Burger. No. No. Okay. Peas. Yes. Lady finger. Yes. Banana. No. Orange. No. Watermelon. Small. One cup only. Small quantity. Uh, yes. Okay. Papaya. Yes. One cup. Candies. Candies, depending upon the formation, yes, you can take if the patient is non diabetic. Sir, beer. <laughs> no. Whiskey. <laughs> no. Okay. Sandwich. Sandwich, depending upon the composition, bread is allowed. And the vegetable, which I told you earlier, if the, they are making sandwich out of it, patient can take. Okay. Sweets. Depending upon the preparation, if it's only the sugar, then you can take if the composition contains any kind of milk item then it's no okay uh, something about non veg that is fish or chicken no fish no chicken okay red meat no milk products 
milk is allowed up to one cup milk product like a uh, clarified butter is allowed in a small quantity and cheese is not allowed buttermilk is not allowed curd is not allowed okay sir keto diet not allowed okay protein supplement not allowed okay chocolates not allowed energy drinks it contains caffeine not allowed it increases the blood pressure no okay boiled vegetables boiled vegetable allowed okay sir pasta macaroni pasta if the sauce is white allowed and macaroni again if the sauce is white allowed sir noodles noodles yes can be taken in a form of you know uh, hakka noodles that means we have to use limited amount of salt and black pepper into it okay last but the least boiled eggs are not allowed okay thank you thank you so much for the answers i hope all the viewers really got the answer what they should take and what they must avoid so sir thanks a lot for giving us the time and giving us all the answers of the questions i am really very much grateful to you so guys if still you have any kind of a doubt query you can ask and write in the comment section because in our next episode we are going to specially talk about the meals like what should we take for breakfast lunch and dinner so sir we will meet in the next episode and i would request you to please give us the time as soon as possible so that we could have a next episode with you for our viewers thank you so thank much you, thank you, you so much and guys one more thing if you have not subscribed or like the video just subscribe our channel to keep getting such videos every week thanks for watching